As the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues to rage on through its second year, peace, in some ways, seems further than it has at any point since the start of the conflict. Both sides have been tested to their limits, but both sides are also increasingly exchanging rhetoric that makes it appear on the surface that neither is yet willing to give up any ground. Recent statistics are chilling. According to the U.S. government, in under two years, the battles taking place in Ukraine have already resulted in over 500,000 casualties, with the majority of the losses by far being skewed towards the Russian side. To date, Russia has lost nearly 300,000 men, with as many as 120,000 being killed in action, more than double the number of deaths the United States sustained in the Vietnam War over a 20-year period, in less than a tenth of the time. But in spite of these heavy loss rates, Vladimir Putin and other Russian leaders have shown little desire to slow down the assault. There is a perception in the West that Vladimir Putin is so stubborn he may never surrender, and a perception in Russia that their nation is so strong that they will never have to. But that perception on both sides may actually be incorrect. Recently, Belarus's president has been taking an increasingly vocal stance, asking Russia and Ukraine to bring the war to a close with a negotiated settlement, and claiming that the war is stuck in a stalemate where neither side can move forward, making any further losses for either party completely wasteful. On the surface, this may seem like a legitimate attempt for a third party to bring the conflict to a close and eliminate any more needless suffering. But there's a strong reason to believe that things aren't quite as they appear. And one needs to ask the important, but for some, not obvious question. Why is Belarus so interested in Russia ending its war? And what does Belarus have to gain from all of this? If all of this sounds like a big political game, you would be right. And speaking of big political games, this episode is brought to you by Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game where you can choose a real country to lead into a fictional World War III scenario. In Conflict of Nations, you can face off against up to 128 other real players in real time, and immersive strategy games that can last for weeks. You get to choose your own strategy as you engage in epic battles and attempt to take over the world as you forge alliances with other players, or declare war on your neighbors in your journey to global conquest. You can choose from many different units to build your army, including tanks, jets, or nuclear submarines. And as you progress in your plans, you can play with the same account on both PC and mobile, ensuring you never miss any of the action. Right now, you can get a head start when you join Conflict of Nations with an exclusive in-game gift of 13,000 gold and a one-month premium subscription for free, available to Icarus Project viewers by using the link in the description of this video. This offer is available for 30 days, so don't lose out and claim yours today. Thanks to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. Belarus is a unique nation. Situated between Russia's western border and Ukraine's northern border, they are considered to be Europe's last dictatorship, governed by an international pariah leader who is largely considered to be illegitimate and a puppet of Russia. Their recent history involves a string of stolen elections, massive repression, internal revolts, more repression, and leaning on Vladimir Putin and Russian military enforcers to help Belarus's president fight back against his own people and stay in power. In fact, when talking about Belarus, one must distinguish between the Belarusian government and the Belarusian people, who often have conflicting interests and desires, <coughs> literally. In this video, we'll primarily be talking about the Belarusian government. As a Russian puppet state, Belarus has a unique worldview. When the invasion of Ukraine began, most of the world looked on with horror, while others who tended more towards the Russian position generally took a politically neutral stance. Very few nations supported Russia explicitly, and even if they agreed with Russia's geopolitical concerns, very few were willing to support the invasion of Ukraine directly as an avenue for solving them, mainly because, even to Russia's dictator allies and friends, the invasion didn't make any sense. Belarus was the major outlier. While most of the world looked on with shock and awe, or confusion, at Russia's strategies, Belarus's national leaders dove into the conflict with eyes wide open, and with both feet firmly pointed in the direction of Ukraine, going so far as to allow Russia to use their nation as a launching pad for their most important mission. As Russia's invasion took off, a key pillar, 
if not the key pillar of their strategy, involved attempting to capture the Ukrainian capital city of Kiev in a blitzkrieg-style attack from several directions. The idea was that in just a few days, Russia would decapitate the Ukrainian government, install a puppet government of their own, and declare victory, resulting in massive gains for Russia with very little conflict, similar to what had been done when they had simply walked into Crimea and captured the peninsula without much of a fight in 2014. But in order to make this all possible, Russia needed Belarus's support. Kiev sat too far from the Russian border to reach quickly enough, and more importantly, half of the city sat on the other side of the Dnipro River from Russia, giving Kiev a naturally defensible barrier against ground incursions. If it couldn't be hit from both sides early on, Kiev would be almost impossible for Russia to conquer and secure a strategic foothold. But the only way for Russia to hit Kiev from both sides was for them to leverage the Belarusian border rather than their own, which sat just 55 miles, or 100 kilometers, to the north of Kiev's city limits, and critically, gave them uncontested access to the western side of the Dnipro River. These realities meant that, more than any other nation in the world, tiny Belarus had the power to stop the invasion of Ukraine in its tracks before it even began. If Belarus had said no, it is highly possible that, unconvinced he could take Kiev quickly, Putin may not have invaded in the first place, or that he may have focused his invasion in a smaller area. That's because a major part of Putin's original strategy centered around ripping off the Band-Aid by overthrowing the Ukrainian government, winning the conflict quickly, and then allowing the world to quickly forget and do nothing, just as had been his experience in Crimea. Putin did not want a long war. He wanted a short war, and he wanted us by now to have forgotten his actions and moved on. And that was only possible with access to Kiev, critically to the west side of the Dnipro. But Belarus did not prevent Russian soldiers from attacking across their borders, and did not stop the invasion of Ukraine. They didn't even attempt to. Instead, they left their borders wide open, and gave Russia permission to launch the missions, and provide supplies and reinforcements from their territory, making them almost just as complicit as Russia was in the war crimes committed against Ukraine. Then, when the war began, Belarus quickly became one of the most outspoken Russian international sponsors, and a distributor of Kremlin propaganda. This was a particularly important role, because while most Europeans are familiar with Belarusian politics and do not trust them, most Americans know little about them, simply because Belarus is a small player, and they're a world away. This made Belarus a critical component when spreading Russian talking points to the West and helping to prevent popular support for aid to Ukraine, especially within the United States. And one could say that Belarus acted as a vassal of, and a mouthpiece for, the Kremlin. In a way, Belarus has always played this puppet role, at least as long as the dictator Lukashenko has been in power. When Lukashenko talks, one can almost see the not-so-stealthy hand of Vladimir Putin moving his lips in the exact direction and form that he desires, especially in recent years, when Lukashenko increasingly relies almost completely on Russia to help him repress his own people so that he can stay in power. And this is all very interesting context when one considers the war in Ukraine today. Because these days, Belarus has begun to adopt a new narrative around the war. One that could reveal a lot about the true internal state of Russia, and its will, or its ability, to continue fighting. Recently, Belarus's president appeared in a speech where, for the first time publicly, he called for an immediate stop command to be issued, asking that both Russia and Ukraine cease fighting and begin negotiations. The reason, he said, was that the war had reached a stalemate, and that further bloodshed was needless helping neither side accomplish their goals. But there are more reasons than one to give pause to this proposal from Belarus and question the true motives behind this apparent change of policy. The important question to ask is, since Belarus served as one of the nations that made the war in Ukraine possible and didn't seem to care about bloodshed and loss of life then, why are they acting so concerned about it now? And what could this reveal to us about the true state of the Russian military? This statement from the president of Belarus can be interpreted in one of four ways. It could be taken at face value. Maybe he really does just want peace. But let's be honest, probably not. He had the chance to prevent needless bloodshed before the war ever started, and decided against it, after all. So 
what else might he be driving at? For one of three reasons, this statement could very well be a sign of serious cracks in Russia beginning to grow to the breaking point. First, Lukashenko could be serving as a face-saving spokesperson for Putin to end the war, trying to bait Ukraine into admitting to a stalemate without Putin having to, and ending the war on terms that could still be sold to the Russian people as a military victory. Ukraine knows that Lukashenko basically speaks for Putin, but the Russian media, with its control over the message at home, could easily hide or downplay this fact. Speaking through Lukashenko about a desire for a ceasefire could allow Putin the ability to try to get Ukraine to start negotiations without looking personally weak, or making it look like he is personally surrendering, by making it appear that Ukraine asked for the fighting to stop, and not Russia, even though the truth would actually be the opposite. So desperate are dictators to defend their own pride. And this is a genuine possibility. But for Ukraine, such an agreement would be tenuous at best. A second reason for Belarus's new position could be that Lukashenko is serving as a spokesperson for Putin, not to end the war, but rather to attempt to buy Russia time through a ceasefire. Russia's recent offensives have been massive failures, and it is becoming increasingly clear that Russia has little hope of winning more territory under the current circumstances without significant losses, due to poor Russian supply lines, exhausted Russian soldiers, and dwindling Russian ammunition reserves, to name just a few things. So Russia may wish for a ceasefire, not to end hostilities, but rather to allow them time to rest and change the circumstances. On one hand, election seasons in Western countries are quickly approaching, and leaders less favorable to Ukraine are on the ballot, meaning that if Russia is able to pause the war, the Western aid that is helping to keep them at bay may dry up rather than being used up on their soldiers. On the other hand, Russia could greatly benefit from uninterrupted time to shore up their defenses that will help them to prevent Ukraine from pushing them back further when a permanent settlement is predictably not reached, and hostilities resume. Since Ukraine has home field advantage when it comes to defense and logistics, any time Russia has to level the playing field and fix the weak points in their front line would make them more impactful in future incursions. It's for this very reason that Ukraine is refusing to negotiate with Russia under any circumstances other than a complete removal of Russian forces from all of their territory. Anything less is just asking for another war in the future, with Ukraine at a disadvantage. That's why Belarus continues to ask for a ceasefire. And this might also perhaps not be because they actually think Ukraine would be foolish enough to take the bait, but rather because they know that they can't. By proposing terms to a ceasefire that they know will ultimately be rejected by Ukraine, Belarus is then able to create more ill will towards Ukraine within Belarus and Russia, and within the minds of a growing number of Western politicians, and more critically, their constituencies. They will predictably portray Ukraine as a warmonger who is refusing peace talks, and will blame Ukraine for continued fighting, even though they are, in fact, a country being invaded and occupied. A third and final possibility is that Lukashenko may be looking for a ceasefire because he is falling out of favor with Putin for failing to send Belarusian troops into Ukraine, something which he cannot do without risking his own people throwing him out of office and onto the street. Lukashenko may want to end the war quickly before he finds himself increasingly between a rock and a hard place. And this is a very real possibility, in combination with either of the other two possibilities, due to the fact that, for many reasons, a large percentage of the Belarusian people seem to be more supportive of Ukraine than they are of Russia. In fact, there are currently more Belarusian soldiers fighting on the Ukrainian side than on the Russian side with an entire battalion of volunteers having gone over the border to defend Ukraine, which many Belarusians see as a brother nation. Many people in Belarus are beginning to see a Ukrainian victory as a first step towards their freedom from their own dictator. And so with every step Ukraine makes towards success, Lukashenko becomes increasingly nervous, leading him to desire a quick resolution as he sees his own empire crumbling before him. I've already covered this in much more detail in my other video about Belarus and the Ukraine war, and how Russia has attempted to bait them into the fighting, so be sure to check it out for more on that. But whichever reason, or combination of reasons you choose behind Belarus's call for a ceasefire, one thing is clear. There are very real cracks in Russia's efforts in Ukraine. Cracks that make the Russian negotiating position a lot more tenuous than they like to let on. 
If Russia is using Belarus as a talking puppet to seed its desire for a ceasefire, it shows that they do not think they can continue to make gains in Ukraine, either leading them to desire an end to the conflict, or, more likely, more time to allow them to regroup and press harder. Alternatively, if Lukashenko's request is genuine, it means he feels emboldened to go against Putin's wishes to call for an end to the war. And this, too, is a major crack in the Russian alliance. No matter how you put it, Belarus's recent actions show that Russia is beginning to become weary and weak. In the meantime, Ukraine continues to hold strong and remains committed to continuing to fight until every Russian soldier leaves their land. These are important facts to consider at a time when the media is increasingly claiming that the war in Ukraine has ground to a stalemate, which is not entirely true. That itself is a topic worthy of exploring, because the war is, in fact, nowhere close to a stalemate, even if progress seems slow. And there are many victory conditions for Ukraine, provided a few key important details take place. That'll be the topic of my next video, so if you're interested in that one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes, or click the link at the end of this video if it's out already. In the meantime, don't forget to start your journey on Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game simulating a modern global warfare scenario. Click on the link in the description to get your exclusive gift of 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free, only available for 30 days. So don't miss out. I'll see you on the next video.